Hi folks, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I got to this stage. The membrane's on, the batten's on, and we're ready for slate. So stick around and I'll show you the process. There's quite a bit of information to share on this one, so I'll take a little pause halfway through the video, go through that, also a bit of a voiceover, because really, priority for me right now is getting this side of the house completely wrapped up and watertight. Today's video is sponsored by Reef Shield. They've kindly supported this episode and supplied us with the membrane. So a big thank you to them. I'm gonna be going into a little bit more info on how this membrane works and why I wanted to use it later on in the video. But for now, I'm making my way across the roof. You can see I've drilled and screwed a little block in on the end of the rafter there just to support the roll. Because I'm working alone, it's a little bit easier to do that than have it rolling all over the place. The roofing membrane comes in a one and a half meter or one meter roll. I went for one and a half because I wanted to cover more ground more quickly and actually there's less joins and when you move further up on the roof I've got all that insulation that I can support the roll on as I'm installing it so it wasn't too hard to work with. Alright that's the first one done, hopefully that was going to be the most difficult. So it's a little bit counterintuitive because you, you imagine you really want to pull it drum tight but actually the whole idea is that we have a slight dip in between, like a drape between the rafters. And now comes the tricky bit, but quite important. We wanna make sure our batten, our first batten, is set where we want it. My fascia that's going on here, my timber is 25 mil, so this is simulating that. And from here, our first slate is gonna hang over 50 millimeters into our gutter. I need to measure from the front of our fascia board up 475 millimeters to what will be the top of our second batten and then from there it's a regular gauge all the way at the reef below that we'll end up with a double batten but we can do that bit later because i want to be able to fold this back Now you may have seen a string line then. What happened is when I set the first batten out, I was basing it on our rafter ends. And the thing is with old houses, things move and they weren't perfectly straight. So I used a string line to set out that batten and then I could know that I've got a good datum to work up the roof from. Now the fact that the roof lights were already installed made it a little bit harder at this point, but I could trim around them, leave a little bit of excess and you could tuck it up underneath the trim. The problematic part is the top of the roof light where the water wants to run back down in. So I had a few little leaks there, but you can add a bit of extra membrane until you get your main flashing on. Well, folks, it is a new week. I'd like to say I'm uh, relaxed and refreshed, but I'm pretty uh, hanging from last week, to be honest. But let me show you where we ended up and what I'm up to today. On Thursday and Friday, I managed to get a good start on the membrane. We had a great weather and we still do for another day or two. So I did start out on the battens, but then I was a bit rushed for time. So I went for every third or fourth to keep things just secure for the weekend whilst we were away. So effectively, the roof is now watertight again give or take a few detailed areas. The roof shield is adequate, you know, it could sit out here for weeks and it'd be absolutely fine. With another couple of days of dry weather promised, I decided to strip the whole front of the roof as well. So this is side two. As with the other side, I decided to use the string line right from the offset here. I could use that to set my bottom of my membrane, but also measure up for my batten. I've got an eaves tray going in here anyway, so the extended part that goes into the gutter will actually be that. 
the membrane can be either trimmed back or left at this point. I've decided to leave the bay window roof as a separate little roof in itself, so that's why I've left the slates on. To give me a hand with the batten layout, I made up a little story stick, measured up with the right gauge for our slates, so it's 200 millimeters, and then that would mark on the membrane exactly where I want the top of each batten to be. That said, when you come back later in the video, you'll see that I actually went through and basically did everything by tape measure as well, just to make sure that we weren't creeping out because it's quite easy to be off three mil on one end, and then by the time you get to the top of the roof, everything is all wonky. Right, this should be the last run of membrane. Then two more runs of batten, and hopefully we'll be weather tight for the day. And that, folks, is us weather tight, just about. It's actually a shame it stopped raining, dare I say it, because uh, you could see the water just beading off it. And this is why you have that little drape in between each rafter, just so that if water ever did get through, through a broken slate or something like that, that it can escape and it's not just gonna sit behind the battens. So it is only super subtle and you can kind of overthink it. You're basically just not looking to get things too tight. I'll show you the front quickly before I pack away all my gear. As you can see on this side, far less battens. Learned my lesson on the other side uh, by trying to think I could do them all. Uh, actually, by going every 600 or 800, you can get all the laps and get everything secure. And then I can go back in and spend some real kind of time getting everything really precise because we want these to be bang on 200. And if I try to rush it now, if you get the bottom one off, then the whole lot just is off to the top. So it's worth spending some time getting that right. The next day I managed to make a start on that little bay window roof out the front. Uh, it was a little bit tricky. There was some timbers to replace there, uh, an awful lot of old lead work to take off. And then I could get that rebuilt and the membrane could come back over the top and we'll be battening around that in the future. Today I'm hoping to get the rest of these battens finished. By getting all the battens on, it just makes it a lot easier getting up and down. It also means that I don't have the risk of the membrane tearing or flapping around in the wind, and it just takes the pressure off a little bit, and then we can take our time getting the slates right, doing all the layout right. That said, I'm spending a lot of time now getting these battens as close as I can to spot on. Another thing I'm doing is making sure I'm staggering any joins. So we are over two lengths anyway, because it's 11 meters, the roof. As far as I'm aware, you're also not meant to have a section of batten less than three rafters. So that's kind of the minimum off cut I need to use at each end. As far as cutting the battens, I'm just leaving the last two nails out until I've cut it to the length. So I'm gonna lay it on, sit it up, put a bit of scrap underneath it, run the circular saw through on the center of a rafter, that way I don't damage the membrane, but it also means I can do it all on the roof rather than kind of cutting, measuring, putting it up. So basically starting on halfway across the rafter or off the end of the roof and then marking and cutting on the rafter, sit it down, nail it and start again. You can see here I've got 150 mil batten there just to help me with my spacing so all that's doing really is just holding it up whilst I get the more accurate fixings in and then I can come back along and fine-tune it 
The problem is these 50mm battens are not all 50mm. They can be 2, 3 or even 5mm off in places. So by cutting just a little stick and putting it in between the battens you'd really creep out quite quickly. I did make up a little jig as well that sat on the top of the batten and then set the top of the next batten. But actually I found it just as easy to have the tape measure in one hand and the nail gun in the other. That also meant I could measure down two, three or four battens at a time just to make sure everything is laid out correctly. Well, as you can see, there's a, a few little bits to sort out. Around the Valex window, we've got some additional battens to install. Around the front, we've got the bay window to, uh, to do all the hips and the valley there, and also our double batten at the bottom. All right, let me share with you my amateur building science knowledge. Let's talk ventilation. That's one of the key parts of a roof because we've got all that warm, moist air in the house, you want to get rid of it. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with condensation in the roof and all sorts of issues. And that's normally achieved by soffit or fascia ventilation. And that's on both sides. So you get this cross flow over the roof. We can have ridge ventilation or in roof sort of tile vents. All those have, you know, their problems. Um, one of which is they can quite easily get blocked up with insulation or Christmas decorations. Two, you can get driving rain, driving snow and all sorts, causing problems with vents further up the roof. Right. It's going to be far easier if we just peel the roof off and using some technical wizardry, the guys at Roof Shield have come up with this. So this is a model of our house roof. We've got the warm room in roof uh, situation up there. So we've got two rooms and then we've got the loft areas in the eaves and they're just conventional loft storage space. So all that warm moist air in the house has got to get out before it causes issues and before it condenses on the underside of our roof surface. Now, conventionally, you have your felt or your non-breathable or even a breathable membrane on top. Now, all of those require airflow. They need ventilation at the soffits or at the ridge or even both. And that is the only way you can get rid of that warm, moist air. If you take that off and put a roof shield membrane on instead, you can do away with that. Because it's so air permeable that the whole thing just acts like one giant roof vent. What that means is we don't have to worry about dead spots, detailing areas where we know airflow will be restricted, and also where our insulation is taking up some of the space between the rafters. We'll be able to look at this in a minute, but you can get more insulation in there if you go with an air permeable membrane like Roof Shield. And as if by magic, we're back on the roof and it's all done. I wish it was that easy. Now, if you've ever insulated between rafters or done a loft conversion, you've probably heard of that 50 millimetre clearance rule. And the reason for that is because you need to get that airflow over the top of the insulation so it can reach wherever your ventilation is, whether that's at the ridge or down at the soffits. Now that can cause problems. If you're in an old house like this and you've got little three inch 75 mil rafters, you're not gonna be able to achieve the insulation value as easy because even filling that whole thing wouldn't achieve the u-value needed so you extend the rafters on the inside to achieve a, a greater u-value in this case we've got 100 millimeters between and then 50 millimeters on the inside of the rafters in the living space and that's fine but it means if you're still needing to keep that 50 millimeter clearance here you're basically losing out on a whole load of insulation space. The benefit of this is you can reduce that 50 millimetre gap. So in our instance, it's probably closer to 25 mil, 30 mil. And that was a bit of a concern at the time. Um, and that's how I kind of came across this product. So if you do need to get more insulation in there, if you've got an older house and you're really struggling, 
or just really want to get the most insulation possible, then actually an extra 25, 30 mil of insulation can make all the difference. That's my Building Science 101 crash course. Hopefully I didn't get too much of that wrong. Next stage for us is going to be to start on the woodwork. I've got all the fascias, the barge boards, the soffits, all being painted down in the workshop at the moment. Then we've got the guttering and the downpipes to fit. They're all being painted off site. So we're getting there. Slates are now here. Two days ago, all the slates arrived. Two and a half thousand of the good things. Uh, there's a few up here whilst I had the hoist going up and down, uh, but most of them we need to get up on the roof. Uh, we'll set them out ready to go on next week. Again, thanks to Roof Shield for sponsoring this episode. If you want to find more info and the technical side of things, then do head over to their website. I'll put a link down below. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of these videos. You can hit the notification bell as well. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.